Chapter 3, Vectors. The first section is about coordinate systems. We used to know Cartesian coordinate, which actually has another name. It's called rectangle coordinates. It consists of x and y for a two-dimensional case, and for a three-dimensional case, we have x, y, and z. How do we determine the z direction? Well, usually we will use our right hand, our four fingers for our x direction, and then go to y, and the sum direction will be the z direction. So that is x, y, and z, right hand rule. Now, if we have a point, which let's say point P, um, it has a position in the Cartesian coordinate of x and y. What does that mean? That means, as a matter of fact, if we connect this point with the origin, and this arrow R, we give a name, it's called position vector. This position vector consists of, of x component, which is R of cosine theta. and a y component of r of sine theta. And x and y are the coordinates of point P. Now, as a matter of fact, we can use another coordinate, which is called plane polar coordinates. The plane polar coordinates is also two-dimensional because it's a plane has two variables. One is distance, that is how far away a point is away from the uh, origin. The other one is the angle that this position vector OP with respect to, to the positive x-axis. So for two-dimensional coordinates, usually we have two variables. The plane polar coordinates has two variables of R and theta. The Cartesian coordinates has a two variables of x and y. And the relationship between them is given as x equal to r cosine theta, y equal to r sine theta. This is a very, very useful. We will use that very often in the future. Now, in last chapter, chapter 2, we mentioned the difference of speed and velocity. The difference is that velocity is a vector. A vector has magnitude and direction. So, because it involves direction, the magnitude is always a positive value. If you still remember, we describe one-dimensional motion. If we decide to the right or to the east, is positive. And a direction to the west will be negative. So positive negative only represent the direction. Now since our direction now can be represented by the angle, let's say theta of counterclockwise with respect to positive x-axis, then there's no need to add a positive and negative anymore. So therefore the magnitude is always positive. When we describe a uh, velocity, we will say 75 mile per hour, 23 degrees north of east, so far so forth. When we describe how fast the airplane fly, we'll say 500 kilometer per hour and 14 degrees south of west. So we have a magnitude and direction. Let's take a look at this one. This is the position vector starting from origin and that point P has a coordinate of negative 3.50, negative 2.50. First of all, negative of x, negative y, which is located at the third quarter. If we could decide this is the first one quarter and second, third, fourth, if we divided our Cartesian coordinates into four quarters. And Negative only means that is um, for the x-axis, 
that its x component, if we go down, this much of x is at left side of origin. That's why it's negative 3.5. And for the negative y, that's right here. It is because to the north is a positive y. So now you're on the south side of this y-axis. So it is negative of 2.5 units. Obviously, if x and y are in SI units in meters, so that is 2.50 meter and 3.50 meter. Negative only means that it is on the left side of origin for the x. It is um, below the, uh, um, for the y-axis, it's below the mm, zero point. That's why it's negative. So if we want to describe uh, this position vector, if we name O of P, we say O of P, if we use plan polar coordinate, what do we do? We will use its x of square plus its y of square, square root, to get how far the distance of point P away from the origin. And then we need to use the angle to describe it. Now, since positive axis, positive x is our reference. This is usually the east, that is the north, and that is the west, that's south. If we define east is zero degree, and if we follow the counterclockwise direction, north will be 90 degrees, west will be 180 degrees, south will be 270 degrees, and come back as 360 degrees. Therefore, right now, the angle we want to describe vector OP is starting from here all the way when we reach this OP. So therefore, we already have 180 degrees because that's from east to west. Then we have additional this much. If we name this angle as alpha, we can easily get alpha. How do we get that? We can use tangent because we know the y and x. Since we talk about a triangle, so the length of y is 2.5 meters and the length of x is 3.5 meters. Therefore, this alpha is arctangent. So tangent to the negative one to arctangent of x that is 3.50 and y is 2. Point, we should use y verse x, so it's 2.50 over 3.50, and that would give us arctangent, that's the angle. So if we use plan polar coordinates, we use the distance r, and we use the angle alpha to describe it. But if we use that rectangle with Cartesian coordinates, and then op is very clear, if x is negative 3.50, y is negative 2.50. So far, we learned of difference between speed and velocity. Let's have a summary. First of all, um, definition of scalar is a single value with units. We can actually um, think about what we know about scalar. Say mass is scalar because mass doesn't need direction. And we say temperature. Temperature is a scalar because it doesn't need direction. Obviously, speed, distance, and these are scalar. And we can also have many, many more other physical quantities as scalar. However, Vectors, what we learn starting from displacement and later we learn velocity and then we learn um, acceleration. Usually the book, when the book describes a vector, it will use bold letter, but however when we write, um, it's hard to recognize with regular or bold letter. So displacement, usually we 
as delta x or delta y or delta r. You just say or delta y or delta r. We put an arrow. Velocity, v, acceleration, a. We put an arrow above it. That means it involves direction. And there are other vectors we will learn very soon. Say, for example, from chapter 5, when we talk about Newton's law and force. Force, F, is a vector. And later also we'll learn that linear momentum. Linear momentum, P, is also a vector. So when you see a physical quantity with an arrow above it or a boat letter, which means it's a vector. Vector has magnitude, which is always positive, and plus a direction. Now, we just learned how to describe direction for the two-dimensional case. And that is we take the east, usually, or the positive x-axis as the reference zero. And then we turn counterclockwise. So from east to the north, and north is 90 degrees. Then west will be 180 degrees. And south will be 2070. And we will come back to that 360 degrees. Now let's talk about um, how to express the angle. We just said that if we have a two-dimensional coordinate, which is a Cartesian coordinates x and y, if we take positive x is east, and this is north, this is south, this is west, and this is south. And if we say 20 degrees north of east, 20 degrees north of east. So east is a reference. We use a protractor to line up with x-axis, and we turn the angle of 20 degrees counterclockwise and then that direction is 20 degrees towards north so it's 20 degrees north of east that is how we find the angle what if I say 10 degrees south of west so if it's 10 degrees south of west now west is reference right so we take the west and then we say it has to move towards south. So we take the west as a reference. We line up the uh, protract here. And then we find counterclockwise. We find a 10 degrees angle. And then this is 10 degrees towards south. So 10 degrees south of west. That is how we find that direction. Now, if we talk about vector. Vector has magnitude. Well, since we have um, displacement, velocity, and acceleration, these are all vectors. So which vector we're talking about, it doesn't matter. If I give you something like um, 20, let's say, mile per hour, and 14 degree south of east. And we know this is a velocity because by looking at the units, it's mile per hour. So in order to express that, we had better decide a scale because um, a vector on the graph, the lengths represent the magnitude. So we need to decide a scale. If we decide that one centimeter equals to, say, 5.0 mile per hour, then a 20 mile per hour will equivalent to a 4.0 centimeter in length for the magnitude if we take this as the scale. So if we want to represent that velocity vector, we're going to use, first of all, a protractor. Since it's a south of east, so we're going to use east as a reference because east is a reference, and we take East as reference, we go to south. So 14 degrees, we use a protractor to find 14 degrees, 14 degrees towards south. And then 
we use a regular ruler to draw a length of 4.0 centimeters and we draw the arrow because a vector has to have a direction, the arrow indicating direction. Then we say V, that's a velocity. And then we mark this as a 14 degree because that is 14 degrees south of east. So by telling people our scale is every one centimeter equal to five mile power, people use a ruler, measure the length. If it comes out as 4.0 centimeters, then they know this is 20 mile power for the magnitude. And by looking at the angle, that's 14 degrees south or east, we have a very complete presentation of this vector of V. So, for example, if I want to express an acceleration, say this blue one, for example. So if we decide scale for the blue one is every one centimeter represent, say, 2.0 of a meter per second square and people know that is about acceleration so they can measure the length of this blue one first of all it is about acceleration and if one is this one centimeter two centimeter and if it's three centimeter say that will represent an acceleration of six meter per second square 20 degrees north of east so pretty much um, we can use a graphic way to present a vector.